Yep, that's me. Hello, beautiful bookish people. My name is Hannah, and today we're going to be tackling the topic, Is Twilight a Satire? Now, after I read New Moon, I became very aware that the fact that Twilight is incredibly self-aware, from the jokes it makes about itself, to the descriptions it uses, to the inside jokes that Stephanie Meyer knows what's up. Stephanie Meyer understands she's not writing the next Paradise Lost. She gets that Twilight is not a masterpiece, and she feeds into that. And so after I read New Moon, there's this constant comparison to Romeo and Juliet. You know, Bella being the Juliet and Edward being the Romeo. But essentially only act for Romeo and Juliet because Edward has left. So in New Moon, it starts out with a quote from Romeo and Juliet, and it's having Bella read Romeo and Juliet for a class assignment, and it even goes as far as comparing Jacob to the Paris, which is hilarious because he is. And here's the thing about Romeo and Juliet, it's a cautionary tale mixed with beautiful poetry. It's not original to say the least. What Shakespeare did is he snuck his poetry into already established works. And it's essentially a story that says don't do these things or you might die. And in New Moon with this constant comparison, I'm, it's like every other page, at least it seemed to be. With this constant comparison to the bard, it made me think, does Stephanie know that Romeo and Juliet is a satire? And if so, it's a genius. So that's what we're going to be doing today, is figuring out if Twilight is in fact a satire. Today, I want to cover three topics. The origin of satire, why Romeo and Juliet is a satire, and finally, is Twilight in fact, possibly, maybe, a satire. The first point that we have to establish is what is a satire. And in doing my research, I found out that there are three types of satire. The more you know. So, right now I kind of want to identify some key terms for you, and what that means is just basically giving you a definition. And the definition of satire is the use of humor, irony, exaggeration, or ridicule to expose and criticize people's stupidity or vices, particularly in the context of politics or other topical issues. So essentially, it's social commentary. Sometimes I think satire is hard to recognize now because our society is drenched in irony shout out to TikTok, because there always seems to be an element of making fun of something. What is satire and its origins? Satire comes to us from the Romans, love that for us, and it translates from Latin to mean fruit basket. And there are actually three types, like I've mentioned before. The first one being Horatian satire. Now, this is the light-hearted satire that likes to poke fun at society. The best example I can think of is um, Saturday Night Live. And they make fun of current events. With Saturday Night Live, everyone is in on the joke. Everyone knows what it's making fun of, especially when they're talking about their debates or political campaigns. Next, we have Junovillian satire. This one is the darker aspect of satire, expressing anger at what we're making fun of. Think of like uh, Animal Farm or Fahrenheit 451. Now these are satires of very big political issues of their time. They're more bureaucratic and, and pointing out issues. And the last is Menopean satire, which comes back to the original definition of kind of a fruits basket. Very random. It tries to attack um, mindsets and um, specific entitlements, if you will. It has to take aim at something higher than the author itself. 
So the thing with satire is there's always a risk that people will not identify it as satire. And my favorite example of this is Fight Club by Chuck Palahniuk. When people originally saw the movie, they they took it at like a base level that men are supposed to act like this 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 brute punching and fist fights when it's really pointing out toxic masculinity and consumerism. The problem with Fight Club is it actually started Fight Clubs, which was the opposite of what it was trying to do. Tropes and satires are kind of everywhere and it's kind of drenched in society. That's my point and therefore sometimes it's hard to point out. Moving on to point number two, Romeo and Juliet, to my belief and what I choose to believe is a satire. Now Shakespeare is kind of one of those topics that we know very little about. But I choose to believe that Romeo and Juliet is a satire. So Romeo and Juliet is supposed to be making fun of love. This is enforced with Shakespeare's over-the-top narrative. Ridiculous plot and timeline was actually supposed to be one big comedy. We all know Shakespeare is not the only playwright of his time, but he's one of the most significant. One of the others of his time was Thomas More, and Thomas More was a playwright that Shakespeare um, kind of had some literary beef and with, I, oh. if you will. And before Shakespeare wrote Romeo and Juliet, Thomas More wrote Queen of Carthage, which is essentially about this chick named Dito, which comes to us from the Romans um, and falls immediately in love. The dude leaves. Dido ends up killing herself. And boom, Romeo and Juliet enters the chat, essentially making fun of this idea, mocking the idea of falling in love at first sight. I just like to believe it because it makes the plot of Romeo and Juliet a lot more bearable. Let me give you the play of Romeo and Juliet with the mindset that it is satire. 400 year old spoilers, but I think we all know how it ends, so. so. Romeo essentially starts off the play being in love with some chick named Rosalind. You're like, whoa, wait a second, not Juliet? Exactly. And ultimately forgets about his ultimate love after 12 hours in meeting Juliet. So Romeo's character is completely over the top and supposed to be extremely unrealistic. And the same day, he was in love with Rosalind, follows another girl who has caught his eye home. And that same night, after one dance, they decide to get married. And there's some complication. Romeo ends up killing Juliet's husband, and he gets banished. Juliet fakes her death, runs away for him. The classic miscommunication trope, they both end up killing themselves because they think the other one is dead. Mind you, this all happens within 24 hours. And at the end of the day, it's supposed to be a cautionary tale. Shakespeare is saying, don't do this, you dummy, because you will probably end up dead. Maybe your first boyfriend at the age of 13 isn't worth dying for. So that is why I believe Romeo and Juliet to be a satire. In my opinion, you can disagree, but I think it makes Romeo and Juliet a lot more bearable when we think of it as a comedy. Moving on, the final question is Twilight a satire? And if it is a satire, what kind of satire is it? It's all about the big questions. The biggest questions are just around the corner. So the thing about satire is it's very complex and it's dependent on context which means that the audience must be able to identify it as such. And I don't know if I can say this about Twilight. One of the questions I think about when I, when I think about Twilight, which is often now, is why did it work? Why was there such a phenomenon about it? Why did people love it so much? I think it's because it introduced romance books to young readers. Because yes, even though these books are about vampires and werewolves and the supernatural, I think we can all boil it down that it is, it is in fact just a romance. The fantastical elements become a backdrop for Edward and Bella. 
And after watching a lot of um, Steffi Meyer interviews, she states a lot that she never read vampire books. So personally, I don't think she's using satire with vampires, but with the romance. She describes Twilight as a love story and falling in love for the first time just with vampires. Stephanie said she grew up reading Gone with the Wind and, and Pride and Prejudice and Jane Eyre and all these like classic works of romance, which makes sense why she uses Romeo and Juliet and New Moon to, to emphasize this idea. If I'm going to be honest, New Moon reminds me a lot of the Italian soap operas that my grandma watches. And in interviews, that's what Stephanie Meyer says, is it's kind of like a soap opera. And I feel validated. And then Eclipse was just almost kind of soap opery fun, right? You know, it's got, I got the really into the triangle and all of the, the action. You have this filthy, rich family who are all related, but not actually. A love triangle, a woman needing saving, unplanned pregnancy. And it's meant to be over the top and purposeful. She takes things from Gone with the Wind, like the separation trope. She takes things from Pride and Prejudice, having a guy very standoffish until we understand he has a heart of gold, ladies and gentlemen. And what Stephanie does is take these tropes and poke fun at them a little bit. Now, does she do it well? That's debatable. Does Edward come across as emotionally manipulative? Yes. Is Jacob Black one step away from saying, Bella, how could you not like me? I'm such a nice guy. Yes. Are they paced well? No. Does it deserve all the hate it gets? No. <laughs> a lot of people think that Bella is a damsel in distress, but I disagree. Bella is almost a subversion of the damsel in distress trope. She's independent. She's smart. It's important for young girls, I think, to have attainable protagonists, someone who's normal and does mundane things like helps Angela with graduation cards. She doesn't sit idle by and let the plot happen to her. When Edward is like, no, I don't want to turn you into a vampire. Bella straight up is like, oh, well, let's have a family vote. She has a family vote and she wins. So to boil it down, if I had to pick a type of satire, it would be the fruit basket one. The so kind of random, not fully blown satire. Because while I do think Twilight has satirical moments, and moments which hit on the nail of Edward's coffin of self-awareness and mocking certain tropes, I don't think I can say it's a full blown satire. <laughs> But what I do think is Twilight is paying homage to what Stephanie Meyer read as a kid, like classic romance novels. Like I just finished Eclipse, and that one is very much paying homage to Wuthering Heights and Heathcliff, which is a whole other discussion. We need to stop romanticizing Heathcliff. Jesus, take the but what I'm saying is, while it has satirical elements, it's not a satire, in my opinion. What I think it is doing is just paying homage to what Stephanie Meyer knows and grew up with and kind of trying to flip it on its head a little bit. Is it done well? Ah, I don't think so. But, you know, everything's subjective. <laughs> so yeah, I guess I essentially have made my case why I think Twilight is not a satire, but instead just paying homage to classic works of fiction. On that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Keep reading and all that jazz. And was coined by, I don't know how to pronounce his name. So the thing about, wow. Jeez, Louise, I'm messing up. I don't want to keep you too long. You know, time is precious. Time is money, money is power, power is pizza. So, does Stephanie know? Just, it made me think. Horatian.
<laughs> the first one being Horatian satire. My favorite examples of satire. Whoa. Bloop. 